Next up, we have a diode test setting. Man, this thing is packed and everything's working as it should. I'm really excited about that. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new, my name is Luke and today we're gonna to be going over all of the different test settings on your Cobalt DT103 Mini Multimeter. It is digital and manual ranging, so if you're a beginner or intermediate, you're wanting to learn more about electrical testing or you need a product review before you buy, well, this video should be for you. So why don't you go ahead, grab a snack, have a seat, and let's get into it. All right, if all of the settings actually work on this meter, I'm gonna be so excited. This thing is so cool. It is t tiny. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but it's not only is it tiny, but it has a lot of different settings. This is a manual ranging multimeter. So we're gonna go a lot more into depth into units of measurement and how to approach utilizing a manual ranging multimeter. Cause there's a couple of things I want you to keep in mind when we're using one of these. Cause there's a whole bunch of different settings on here. And that is gonna be, we have these different sections. So we'll start with this first section here and this section is to indicate voltage AC. Okay, so think of like what's coming out of your wall socket as opposed to like a battery is gonna be voltage DC. But this number is indicating, okay, I can measure up to 500 volts AC on this setting. The next setting down is I can measure up to 200 volts AC with this setting. And why would you want to have two different selections for that. And if this is a little bit confusing, that's okay. We're gonna do a lot of examples with every single setting on the wheel. So that'll help it sink in. The reason why we have more than one option is for detail and clarity in our measurement. I want you to think of using a manual ranging meter like we're using a microscope. And when we first set up a microscope, you kind of have the lens set back way up here. And then as you try to look at something, you kind of zoom in and dial in what you're trying to look at into focus. Same kind of deal with a manual ranging multimeter is when we set it to a high setting like that, the up to 500, it's kind of like setting the lens up here. And then as we need to, we can dial the lens in and refine our measurement so we get as much detail out of it as we can with the limitations of the meter. So we're gonna give you an example here. I've got an AC power source that I'm gonna take a measurement of. I'm set to 500 volts AC. There is a hold button on there, nice. Okay, so we can see that we're reading like 118, 119, it's kind of floating around back and forth. I would like to get a little bit more detail with this measurement. I'm at 500 volts AC. The measurement I'm taking now is below 200 volts AC. And I know this setting, the 200 volts AC setting, can measure up to 200 volts. So if I move my dial now to that 200 volt setting, I should be able to get a decimal place added to my measurement. And now I'm reading a solid 119 point, you know, six, seven, eight, roughly around there, I can read it to the tenths now. So that's how we're sharpening the image when we bring it in and refine it. So we're going to give you examples with the resistance and with the DC voltage settings as well as, as we move through the demonstration. Next up, we're going to have our battery test, which is only for nine volts. I don't know why they left out 1.5 volts, but I'll take it. Very simple test that you can do is you have your positive and your negative, and then you just put your red to positive, your black to negative. And what this does is it's gonna load test the battery. It puts a very small load on there, kind of stresses the battery, and then it gives you the voltage after it does that. Kind of gives you a voltage drop. Next, we have micro and milliamps. And the solid and dash line is to indicate that they're only rated for reading DC 
current measurements, no AC. So only stuff that's pow powered by a battery. And on top of that, it's a very, very small amount. I've got a little demonstration we can use here to see how well it works. Now what we can do is milliamps is way bigger than microamps, even though, and this is what can be confusing. It says 2000 microamps. Well, 2000 microamps is really two milliamps, okay? So it's a much, much smaller number than that 200 milliamps. So we can start big, start with our lens way out here, and then we can work small. So let's start taking some measurements. We're gonna take our measurements in series with our circuit. Okay, so I'm showing there 36 milliamps. Let's work down the line, 12 milliamps. Oh, now I'm getting to a really small number. So that number is less than two microamps. So now I know that I can move it, move my wheel down and now I can get a much more accurate number. Wow, I'm reading 1,192 microamps or 1.19 milliamps. And then I can go down to something even smaller and look at that. And now we have 121 microamps. Next up, we have a diode test setting. Man, this thing is packed and everything's working as it should. I'm really excited about that. If you haven't tested, this is just a diode, just a normal diode. Take note of the white line on the diode and my lead polarity. Okay, you're gonna test your diode in both directions. This will be the first direction. And the number that we're getting there is gonna be your voltage drop. Okay, what this number is really saying is 0.532 volts or 532 millivolts. And we want to see between 500 and 800 millivolts in one direction of our diode to indicate that it's good. Then we'll go ahead and turn that diode around, press my hold button to release that measurement. Notice my, my lead polarity and the white line on the diode. This OL should remain. That means that there's no backflow on our diode and then it's testing good. And something I always like to do is see if it can light a white LED. I doubt it will be able to. Oh, it can. It doesn't show us the, sh the forward voltage, but it's able to output enough voltage from the meter to light the LED, which is cool. I like that. All right. Let's go ahead and dive into our resistive settings. It's going to be the same thing. Starting big and working our way small. So the biggest number we have here is 2000 K ohms, which is really 2 million ohms. And then our smallest number is the 200 ohms. I know that seems like obvious, but with the units of measurements on meters and the way that they're presented sometimes, it can be really confusing if you're just learning this stuff. So I'll set it to the biggest number setting and we can go through and check some resistors and see what we get. Okay. So I'm on a K ohm setting. So this is reading 1056 K ohms or 1 million 56,000 ohms, okay? So this isn't a thousand ohms. This is a thousand plus three zeros. And that's why it's important that we pay attention to our units of measurement on the meter. Go to the next one down. Okay, so this is saying 98 K ohms. So 98,000 ohms is the amount of resistance. Now is 98, 
smaller than 200 k ohms, it is. So if we wanted more detail, we could go down and now we can read it to the tenths and it's really 98,200 ohms of resistance. But that number is still much larger than 20K. I'll move it back up to the big number. We're gonna go down. Okay, nine K ohms, even smaller than this 20K. So I could hop straight to the 20K if I wanted, or I could simply just cycle down and see, okay, I get tenths. So next I should get to the hundredths. And I do, so now I know it's not just 9,000 ohms, it's 9,970 ohms. Set it back here, let's do a small number as an example. All right, I'm, I'm measuring a really small uh, valued resistor and I have my resistor setting to the largest number possible. Notice how it doesn't say OL, it just gives me a bunch of zeros. So the meter knows that there's some kind of resistance there. It just, it, the, the microscope is so high up here that everything down here is so blurry, you don't really know what you're looking at. We need to bring and refine the microscope more and more. So we can simply just start, man, if I had a better stand for my meter, okay, it's not gonna work. Okay, so I've got my leads terminated to my one little resistor, and we can start to walk down the wheel and bring it into focus. Still nothing yet. Okay, now we're getting a value. We're still in a K ohm setting, so we would move this decimal place over three places to get an idea of what the measurement is. So one, two, three. So what is that telling me? Like 60 ohms? If we go down further, now we're in a whole number and it's really 67. So that's the difference. Seven ohms of resistance difference from six to 67. And then we can step down even one more. And now we can read it to the tenths. And now we have an even more accurate number it's really 68.3 ohms of resistance. And that's as far down as we can go. And then lastly, we have volts DC. Looks like it's rated to measure up to 500 volts DC. I don't have anything near that. But again, just like a resistors, you can start big and work your way small. Let's measure like this battery. Got a little battery here. So we're getting a value of 13 volts. But if you know anything about batteries, there's a big difference between a 13 volt and 12 volt charge on a battery. And that's what it's cycling back and forth through. With batteries, we generally wanna be able to read to the hundredths of the volt to get a really clear idea of the charge of the battery. So we can walk it down. Now we can read to the tenths. Okay, looking like 13 volts for sure. But now the tenths value, we're not very sure of. And then I can move it to this 20 volt DC value. And now I can see, okay, the charge of that's really 13.26. And that gives me a really clear idea. And then this millivolt setting down here, will get an OL because it's out of limits. So anyways, that's your mini multimeter. I am very impressed by this little guy. Uh, everything works on it, which is surprising, not for the brand, but just for something so small and it has so many functions and for all the functions to work properly. Let's just do one more exercise before we get going. And that is some of you might be wondering, why is there a, a nine volt DC setting when you can measure nine volts DC, the DC voltage setting? And that's kind of what I was talking about with putting a load on it. And this is a little bit more advanced, but I think this is fun to always check. And that is the internal impedance of the meter. So if we're gonna measure a nine volt battery with the appropriate setting on the DC side, we get a measurement, what's that, 9.45? We can take and measure the resistance of the meter on that setting and it should be like, okay, it's one mega ohm. 
Can you see that okay? We got a capital M there that you haven't seen on this meter. It's from mega. So the units of measurement, this is for million, one million ohms is what we're seeing roughly, right? 999,000 ohms. If we change the dial to the nine volt battery setting, we see our resistance value drops dramatically. Now it's at about 1500 ohms or 1.47 K ohms. And if we look at Ohm's law, as resistance goes down, current goes up. So it's able to draw more current from the battery with the internal resistance of the meter dropping. And that's what load tests the battery. So I hope that makes sense. A little bonus part for you. Um, I always like to check that when I can do the battery testing. Um, anyways, go check out some videos. Leave me some comments and I'll catch you on the next one.